Looking to the past and above all, the vision of anthropology, we see that the need of protection and tendency to attack, inherent of man, guide his efforts for the development and manufacturing of weapons. Certainly, the ideas of using a limb, bone, thorns, as an extension of the hands and arms, improve efficiency, began a series of thoughts that would define in the future the tools used in the arts of attack and defense. Nobody can deny that a piece of wood is one of the oldest weapons of combat. From the men of the caves to the present day, we can see the same types of attacks included in a contest that survives for over a thousand years. Just a simple small piece of wood. Every culture, every nation, regardless of reference, set their forms of attacks and defense from the piece of wood or bone. What we know today as Tamborutsu certainly has its origins rooted on this period. Translated as only a small beam or timber, this has become a powerful artifact of war when unskilled hands used to beat, detain, fracture, choke. Each seteigata corresponds to a feature in particular. We can see different forms implemented in different arts but similar paths find the use of this kind of weapon as simple and effective. Tambo Jutsu is far from being considered a noble art when compared to arts that characterized and had a strong influence in the culture of an ancient Japan, such as Kenjutsu, Yaijutsu and others. The weapon that defines this art is nothing more than a small stick about 50 cm in length. Formerly, the tambo was made of heavier wood, However, over time, other lighter woods were used in their manufacture. Besides not having the status of nobility, the fact of the weapon being only a piece of wood or a small stick doesn't contribute to its wide dissemination and of course couldn't be considered an object of art as the katana. However, the fact that it has been classified as an art condemned to the condition of simplicity, it was also efficient. There is no complexity on their handling form. Perhaps we can say that the movement of greater difficulty is the inversion of the weapon while during application, so instead of holding it by one of the extremities used for impact, we move it to a blocking position where most of the weapon is parallel to the forearm. Although the practitioner would need a period of training and coordination process to own the skills and thus develop the agility necessary to implement this adjust with assurance in combat. What we could certify is that the handling of Tambo is as simple as it is also dangerous. It is an extremely versatile weapon which achieves high speed of impact and therefore cause serious damage and could easily lead to death depending on where it reaches the human body and if the first impact is followed or accompanied by continuous strikes. For its speed, a person training its management can amount to vulnerable points of the opponent's body in a short time, even after attacks or blocking defense from the opponent's possible reactions. The tambo is not a cutting weapon as the other that are top of the list of the noble weapons of Kobujutsu, but keeps for itself the advantage of facial thinking and fractures. Thinking or facial fractures occur in the school by powerful impacts on the most vulnerable area, as the temple, one of the most favorite targets the tambo attack. The head injuries with fractures and collapse are characterized by the presence of fracture bones sinking fragments, which compress and harm the adjacent brain tissue. Sinking or fascial fractures occur in the skull by powerful impacts on the most vulnerable areas as the temple, one of the most favorite targets of the tambo attack. The head injuries with fractures and collapse are characterized by the presence of fracture bone sinking fragments which compress and harm the adjacent brain tissue. Fractures of the internal auditory canal, middle ear structures and otic capsule may be involved in this trauma without cutting. The most common fracture of the temporal bone that occurs in blunt trauma is a longitudinal fracture of the temporal bone. It is estimated that 70 to 90 percent of the temporal bone fractures are longitudinal. These fractures most commonly result from trauma to the skull from lateral direction in the parietal region of the head. Transverse fractures 
of the temporal bone are less common than longitudinal fractures affecting approximately 20 to 30 percent of fractures of the temporal bone. These fractures occur most often by a severe trauma of the occipital portion of the cap, but they can also occur from a direct frontal trauma. Moreover, approximately 10% of the fractures are committed or mixed. The anatomy of the skull base reduces the chance of isolated transverse or longitudinal fractures. Joint fractures with fracture line extending to more than one direction through the base of the skull can be seen. Depending on the height reached by the extremity of tambu, when given with great power or strength, it can cause serious trauma on jaw articulation. Another point to target is the face area and as the zygomatic bone serves as a kind of shock absorber, the higher incidence of fractures caused by the tambu are there, preceded only by frequencies of nasal fractures. But in what non-facial fractures concerns, many forms can lead to this result since a strong impact on upper parts as thorax and arms, till the use of tumbo as levers for violent locks based on short angles, so the opponent couldn't harmonize with the speed and then protect himself from the very same lock moving his body to a projection technique.